Welcome to the highlights of the first one day international in the Colonial Medical Insurance ODI series between the Windies and England. Kensington Oval, the venue on a pitch that was uh, shaved and bereft of any grass. It looked a very good batting surface for the opening game of the series. The Windies ranked number nine against the number one ranked team in ODIs. Jason Holder won the toss and elected to bat first. Confirmation of the teams, Chris Gale was back in West Indies colors and uh, there was a debut as well for Nicholas Puran and John Campbell for England. Jason Roy, Johnny Bairstow at the top, Owen Morgan would be leading this outfit with the seamers in Wokes, Plunkett and Wood. We go straight to the top of the action where Darren Ganga was with Nick Knight. Alongside John Campbell. Uh, impressed most of us during uh, the Test match series. Didn't get the big score in that series, but looked very much at home in Test match cricket. Evan Lewis missing out uh, in this one-day series. He picked up an injury, so replaced by Campbell. Terrific numbers for Chris Gale over a long, long period of time. Very familiar now how he warms up and how he prepares for an innings. Should be a good challenge for him. He's going to be up against uh, Chris Wokes, who's been uh, England's best one-day bowler for a little while now. Very consistent. And uh, Mark Wood. So John Campbell, who's seen Mark Wood in the last Test match. Ball is right arm over, Chris. Standard field. Two slips in place. So Morgan in charge of this England side. Joe Root, the England Test speed. match captain, will be carded to come in three. And that's what you get from Chris Wokes. He'll be targeting the top of that off stump. So it's a bit of a little test for Chris Gale. Oh, oh, oh. Boundary though to finish. It was a super shot. He just leant on it, didn't try and hit it too hard and eased it through mid off. Gets lucky, gets very lucky. Not a slow ball this time, actually beaten for pace. So good mix-up delivery from Chris Wokes. In a matter of second slip was in place, it would have gone away very quickly for four. Just uh, a little wild and uh, a little wide this time from Wokes. Well, they need to be a little straighter. Another boundary. He's looked in good form, looked in good touch during the test match. He's continuing that form on uh, in the, st the start of the one-day series. First signs of aggression. John Campbell has been the aggressor throughout this partnership. And Wokes is just a little too full and a little on the pads, and Campbell won't miss out. This is how he plays. He's so unassuming. Another off cutter pulled into the leg side and gone. It's a good catch. Boy and Ali out there at deep square leg. Yes, he was a little bit squarer before Moin Ali came just in front of square. And Campbell struck this well, but just not well enough. Good catch from Moin Ali. Judged it well. Walks get a, gets a wicket. And the first one to fall for the West Indies is John Campbell. Gone for 30. It's 38 for one. In at three, Shea Hope takes up wicket keeping duties too. Best of 146, well played. Mark right, Woods down again. A lovely shot, beautiful time. He's straight down the ground four. He's in good nick. And Shea Hope. He timed that too. Just a flick of the bottom hand. One bounce goes for four. Yes, it's all about timing with him. All high in the air. Who wants this? 
Oh, what a drop. What a drop. And Jason Roy, the fielder. Chris Gale finally deciding it was time to have a go. Chooses the wrong one, just slices it up into the air. It was in the air for a long time. Got to it. Into the hands. And out again. So Gale gets a life. Length ball sliced away. Bit of damage here for Plunkett. Ball goes for four. pitch and slapped should have been stopped but it's gone for four it's finished on the beach Gale finally getting into his stride more sixes in international cricket across all formats now going past Shahid Afridi of a Pakistan and believe it or not, his first boundary of the day. It's been a long time coming. Not out of the middle of the bat either, but that's the power of Chris Gale. Beautiful, beautiful from Shea Hope. A clang onto the roof of our, our media centre. That is some hit. That is a huge hit. That is just above us, that is. We must be at least five or six stories up. This has gone a long way. Look at the follow-through, the flourish. Nice again from She-Hope, just making enough room. Ten of two balls of this Moen Ali over. female game that's teed off and that's gone starting to get into his stride how easy was that was that the universe boss watch his reaction as it hits the middle of the bat he doesn't even look really where it went he just hit it turned around started to mark his guard Gets it through, just to the right of the fielder there at Deep Murikit. Another boundary for Chris Gale. And he will get his uh, eight half century in ODI cricket. What a fine innings from Shea Hope, his fastest half century in his career in ODI cricket as well. His teammates are they appreciate it and so too he's doing this in front of his home crowd here at Kensington Oval. There she goes. Similar style, similar bowler. Chris Gale. There's no stopping this man when he hits it. That's in the jerk chicken shed. And he's not in this ground. Gonna have a break here, easy. It's a long way. <laughs> we'll see you later. There it is. Half century number 50 for Christopher Henry Gale. The universe boss. He said, expect big things from him in this series. Well, he looks very phlegmatic. Teeing off. Goes high, goes hard, and goes for six. Oh, they're doing well in the chicken shack. That's over towards the port again. Length ball from Plunkett. Slower ball off cutter. It's right in the slot. This one, high up, further, typical of Chris Gale. It's a length ball again. 
for doing a roaring trade in the chicken shack. Jerk chicken, rotis, it's an off cutter, it's right in the slot. Well, not under a great deal of control, but he finds the middle of the bat. It was sort of almost a duck hook in the end. Bit of extra pace from Mark Wood, but pace on this surface, the batsmen are enjoying. Beautiful shot. Enough elevation, mid-off is up, so uh, if it was a fullish ball from Stokes, as a batsman, he's looking to give it the heave-ho, and he did exactly that. Should be, yes, good catch, very good catch. There's a lot of wind out there, and Ben Stokes, as Jeff was saying, has bowled really, really well. This one was dug into the surface. It didn't come out very quickly, and a top edge, and nicely taken by Rashid. They desperately needed that England. Yes, he looked all set for a really big one, she hope. And just a top edge, trying to work that into the onside. Settled under it nicely, Adil Rashid. Takes the catch. Stokes picks up a wicket. Has a knack for that. And uh, well played. 64 from Shea Hope. Comes to an end. West Indies 169 for two. Shimon Hetmeyer, one of the uh, future stars possibly of uh, West Indies cricket. Certainly that's the view of Chris Gale when we spoke to him this morning. He picked out this man as uh, someone who feels can really make an impact. What a shot. Again, just giving himself a little bit of room. Front leg moving towards the leg side. And a boundary then uh, to finish the over. <laughs> he gets it completely wrong. It's going to be a no ball for height. What are you going to do now, Guffy? <laughs> Surrender. Get the white flag out. It's a free kick. <laughs> but you wouldn't have bowled that, would you? You'd have been outside off stump. Oh, oh it's another big one. It's not going to be. Uh, yes, it is. It is going to be out of the ground again. I think that's the fourth of the game so far. Free hit, easily dispatched this time uh, by Chris Gale. 81 he moves on to. New balls. Can I just ask, we've just been talking to Chris Gale about when you bowl to Chris Gale, you cannot bowl at the stumps and length because that's where it, exactly at this stage of the innings he wants you to bowl it. It's just a free, it was a free hit, but that he just gave him an absolute bonus ball there. That's right in Chris Gale's heart. So what, is that just pressure? That's exactly what he does. He bowls at the stumps and uh, another dispatch. This time not out of the ground, but Hetmeyer is very quickly into his work. He's on 10 from just three deliveries, a couple of boundaries. He really got hold of this, didn't he? Well, treated with uh, disdain. Middle of the bat again from uh, Chris Gale. He just uh, stepped down a couple of times and spotted it over mid-wicket. Well, I think he's trying to get him to hit it, to hit with the angle into the wind. Because if he mistimes it, then th there's an opportunity there. He's a big, strong man. Oh. Oh, it's gone up a long way. That will take some catching. Not quite. It goes all the way for six. There were three men going back. Josh Butler, one of them. Jason Roy, the other. Well, he really went after this, Chris Gale. It, was, it went way up in the air. Classy batting. Very classy indeed. He knew the length, he knew the line, and he just stepped across and whipped it away. He's a very talented lad, Jim Ron Hetmeyer. Another four. Moen Ali this time couldn't stop it. It was uh, pretty well timed. Chris Gale on 99.
quality then uh, from Chris Gale. He just saunters through for an easy single. A real struggle for him at the start of his innings. But, uh, he's been in full flow for the second part, the fast, last 50. And you can see what it means to him now. He's back in the side and he's back in his best form. Well appreciated by Sir Gary and Wes Hall, his teammates. <laughs> Started off slowly. And finally just increased the momentum. Out. Good catch, good low catch in the end. He was always just dipping on uh, Jason Roy. He wasn't sure whether to come forward or back, but uh, they needed that England. Hetmeyer has uh, played a gem of an innings, 20 from 15. And Chris Wokes picks up his second. That's just overly aggressive. Shimron Hetmeyer. Uh, timed this quite well, went flat. Nicely taken. So he goes for 20. Weston is now 229 for three. Nicholas Poran from uh, Trinidad joins Chris Gale. Oh. I don't think he's got anywhere near enough of that. Oh, good catch. Jason Roy has had a tough time out in the field. The ball was swirling, went a long way up. Yeah, he takes it very well in the end. This is why I don't agree with Owen Morgan's decision to introduce uh, Adel Rashid. The 34th over should have been introduced a lot earlier because he's a genuine wicket taker. Immediately into his second over, presents an opportunity, and this time, Jason Roy makes no mistake. Nicholas Furan on debut will be disappointed, had an opportunity to make an impact with the bat, but he's going without scoring. It's 2.30 for four. Darren Bravo comes to the crease to replace Nicholas Furan. Well, who said you have to have a look at a ball? Those days are well and truly gone. That is gone a long way high into the wind. It didn't matter. That's how you get off the marking start. Wasn't in the best of form in the recent test series, but he's a class player, Darren Bravo. Maybe the confidence of a Chris Gale on the other end. Oh, that sounded good. Real flick of the wrist through the ball as well. Brings up the 250 for the West Indies. Bravo is such a wonderful player. Now spin bowling, unfortunate image there. Spectator being struck with the ball. Not a good sight at all. Not a good shot to... Well, that's in the slot again. He doesn't move after hitting that. Same response towards Moin Ali. He picked his spot, was full, was flighted, didn't look to go leg side, went straight over long off. Oh, that's big. He really launched into that as well. This time he goes on to the leg side. He's taking a hit from Chris Gale. At this stage of his innings, he's seeing it well. Oh, that's hit hard again. You can just hear the sound of it on the middle of the bat. Now well, be careful in the crowd. It's going pretty flat and pretty long as well. Six hitting becoming contagious for the West Indies. Chris Gale leading the pack. And his lesser partner, Darren Bravo, falling suit as well. 
Oh, and again, stands and admires that. This is brutal batting. Another massive hit. Nine overs are remaining in the innings. And if they continue in this vein, well, 350 plus, definitely. That is taken this time, and it's almost as if it hit a wall halfway down to Wokes, into the wind, and the wind just stopped a lot of the velocity as it was heading to the boundary. A terrific ball in again from Rashid. Sure, it's oh, it's a leg spinner. Bravo this time looking against the breeze, and it holds and it hangs. Instead of himself, Chris Wokes safe pair of hands but the big fella's still there second wicket for Rashid good innings good hand there from Darren Bravo 40 from 30 294 for five Jason Holder with a, a double hundred in the recent test match series the best of 99 in one day internationals Now well, he's cleared that one quite easily. 302, 300 is up, 302 for five. 19-6 of the innings. Oh, he's hit this onto the beach, it's a googly again, but it's too short. He's got the time just to move back into his crease and extend his arms. Forget the breeze. That's into the sand. That's beautifully played. Readjusted his stroke quite nicely based on the length and the line. And it was dexterity from Holder. That's where he likes it. That's a very strong area for Jason Holder. Inside out. Stokes has got his man. Jason Roy will be a man who will be fairly aggrieved. Having dropped Galen 9, he stood there and seen him pummel 135. Well, it's a wonderful innings. It really is. 39 years of age. Real destruction. He started with 12 singles. My, as he put on a show. That little bit of luck that you get. But he's played a magnificent hand here. The ground stands to the big fella. Huge man in every sense. 135 in 129. 317 for six. Another one for Rashid. Three wickets to him, and he's not finished yet. Why did he take so long to come into the attack? Well, the batsmen are looking for a review or a replay and we're going to have a look now the umpire's actually given him out he missed the stumps first up and then got back but Jason Holder he wanted to have a look at it through the third umpire he's still looking back but he was given out player Ashley Nurse I'll just have a good look at it and hit it for six that's caught in the crowd just watch this like catch this enough on it yes enough on it Pretty good, Ashley knows that playing these little cameos. Well, he sure is. These are big blows. 15 
from this over so far. And it's a high flighted, loopy leg spinner. Come on, put me out of my misery. Who is it? Santa Jasaria. Keeper calls for it and takes it. Wonderful change of pace. And it's the end of Brathwaite. There's Ben Stokes again, picks up his third wicket. And loses control of it completely, big Carlos Brathwaite. Butler calls it, get everybody out of the way. Pouches it. So Brathwaite just with three, 3.43 for eight. Magnificent shot from Bishu. Equals the world record for the most sixes in an innings. 22 hits so far. What a brilliant shot this is. It's outrageous. I've said it so many times. That's on the breeze. Resounding way to end the innings from Ashley Nurse. 23 sixes in the innings to the joy and delight of most here at Kensington Oval. Chris Gale will hold the spotlight with his marvellous hundred. Well, what an end. Nurse crashing this to the Hall and Griffith stand. And it hits the stand and it's still rising. 21 fours, 23 sixes, 360 for eight at 7.2 runs and over. England have got to go some here. Nurse 25 from eight deliveries. A steady opening partnership between Campbell and Gale saw Campbell going for 30. 64 to Shea Hope looked in very, very good touch, scoring at a runner ball. But it was Chris Gale who shone brightest here at Kensington Oval. 135 at better than a runner ball is 24th, won the International 100. A lot of work to be done by England's bowlers. Two for 59 for Chris Wokes. Not too bad off 10 overs for him. Ben Stokes was also excellent. Three for 37. Adil Rashid a little bit expensive, but he came into the attack in over number 34. Should have been done earlier. He finished with three for 74. So 360 for eight for the Windies. And it means that 361 needed by England. They'll have to go at over seven runs per over on average if they're to get there. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have all the highlights and the action from England's run chase. Jason Roy opening up with Johnny Bairstow. Well, I reckon this is one of those matchups. Matchup of Spin versus Jason Roy. Huge opportunity for Bishop to be a wicket taker. Generally, Johnny Bairstow has tucked into the spin more or sooner than what Jason Roy has. First boundary of England's innings to Johnny Bairstow. It's a great sound off the bat. First six of the innings to Jason Roy. It's the sound as that hits the middle of the bat. Just they're not bothered at all about the field, they just hit it. And just too straight that time. Clipped away, pace on the ball, you don't have to put much back on it.
gets it through. And another boundary. Four fours and one six now in England's innings. Another one. It's been raining boundaries here. Club that. 148 kilometers per hour, but it sped past the bowler at the same pace. I feel sorry for some bowlers today. 50 comes up for England, and we're only into the sixth over. Too quick, too quick for Ashley Nurse at deep square leg. Oh, that's the problem. Two straight that time, just helped it along. Seen a lot of power, now we've seen a bit of touch. Another four. And even with those two men protecting in front of square, the leg side, Jason Holder's erring. Good example of it. He's so strong. Jason Roy through that leg side. He's in great touch. Of course, he scored 100 uh, in the warm-up game just a couple of days ago. With what is a very settled side. There's further evidence that they're just using the pace. Just using the pace that's on offer on this very good surface. Very difficult for bowlers to control batsmen when they're in this sort of mood. Super shot. Bash through the offside. And another half century, another half century in one day international cricket off just 30 deliveries. He came into the game in good form. He's continuing that good form. through to the keeper and it was a change of length that worked well, they've been under the pump the West Indies they needed a wicket and Jason Holder delivers short they're still trying to pull it away thick edge easy catch to hope Bowlers end and here still goes for 34 and just 33 balls. It's 91 for one. Joe Root then, fresh from uh, a test match 100, fresh from 100 in the warm up game as well. So the two uh, hundreds in that warm up game at the crease to right now, Jason Roy and Joe Root. on its way flash flash hard and no one a third man third man is up in the ring so we'll get uh, full value 67 from 43 for Roy England 113 for one Tried to ball it quicker there and dragged it down. It beats the fielder. Not a good delivery at all from Bishu. Oh, high in the air. Who wants it? Wicketkeeper comes back. No, he doesn't get there. Well, Shane Thomas was coming around. Very fortunate. The wicket keeper is not getting there. Well, if you're feeling at Kensington Oval, you've got to prepare yourself to understand the win. And this ball would have been going away from O'Shane Thomas all the time because of the northeast easterlies that blows across this ground. Oh. 
and should reach the boundary. Just got to be careful, Jason. Right? He's gone on to 80. Powerful shot. There's nobody there. One bounce flat. Oh, goes over the top, full-length ball. Nobody moves. One bounce again. Into the 90s. In full control of this innings, uh, Jason Roy. With their lineup, they need to get into this batting lineup. 100 for Jason Roy. Second fastest for England versus West Indies after Moen Ali's 53 ball 100 at Bristol a couple of years ago. And what an innings it has been. Wonderful moment, wonderful innings as well. Naturally a very aggressive player. And he's been really smart today as well. The shot selection. Should be a boundary for Joe Root. The first for him. He's been at the crease now for 30 deliveries. It's a lovely shot, all the way for six. Kept the shape quite beautifully, 176 for one. Should be a chance, should be a chance, Nicholas Puran. Oh, he drops it, he floors it. That should have been gobbled up. Yeah, there are a lot of England fans in the ground. And there's one or two West Indians who cannot quite believe that that was put down. He was in the air for a long, long time. He had a little bit of work to do, but it looked like he got there. And he thought then he's gone. Simple enough right there. Hey. Nice touch, and once Chris Gale is after it, you can almost guarantee it'll be four. In the gap, and four. Boundaries continue to flow, 23 fours now in addition to three sixes. This time he's gone. Darren Bravo holds on to what in the end was a straightforward chance. And the wicket, the breakthrough has come. Well, he walks off disappointed, but uh, that is a terrific innings. It really is. Team chasing 361 to win. The way he set out the start of his innings, we're disappointed with that. It just flew off the edge of the bat. It's a good catch coming forward, but the game has been set up by uh, Jason Roy. So he departs. 123 from uh, 85. England's captain Owen Morgan comes to the crease. A couple of good series that preceded this in this format in Sri Lanka he was brilliant solid against India prior to that so his form has been good that's gone all the way Shane Thomas has been found once more is there a bat on that? Yeah, 50 for Joe Root. He's just ticked along on the undercard. 51 from 55 balls. It's carried on from that 100 he got in the third test match. It's just come in, knocked it around. He's only hit three boundaries. Well, it's just not a bowler's game today. Beats him for pace, goes straight over the keeper. That is 5,000 runs for Joe Root in ODI cricket for England. Oh, the 
that's just so good the way that he's had all the time and picked his spot again chance Ashley Nurse again tougher chance this time pulled away and finds the boundary just for a moment and the deep square might have felt he had a chance but uh, it's England's day with the bat so far went all the way was short look how he opens up just to find the angle to hit it behind square goes away very quickly third man was uh, a little wide and a little uh, well up Perhaps 10 yards too close, really. Had no chance of cutting that off. Gotcha. What a shot. Just getting enough elevation to beat extra cover. That is not an easy shot to play by any means. He made it look very straightforward. He's one of the best players in world cricket, Joe Root. Powered down the ground this time. Just accelerating nicely now. That required rate is around about six and a half runs per over. Signature shot from Owen Morgan. Again, the fielding hasn't uh, been top quality. This time the power. Well, he's a very consistent player with the bat, Owen Morgan, captain of this England team. He sparked a revolution with this side. And the man in which they play, fearless. And again, two men, one there and one on the boundary, but no chance. He's so precise with the shot. Fifty for the captain. It took a little while to get in, but it's 50 or 37 deliveries. Fine innings by the England captain. And his teammates, uh, they appreciate the effort. And they're well on their way to chasing this target score of uh, 360. More boundaries, uh, two sixes, striking at over 135 at the moment. Employs. But not with strokes like this one. Yeah, it's with the wind, but uh, not cleanly struck. Slap straight to mid off. And Jason Holder makes no mistake. Been a tough day in the field for O'Shea Thomas. He's been everywhere. The ball has followed him. Hasn't been able to be as consistent as he would like. And the Windies generally have found wicket taking very, very hard to come by. A rare opportunity held on by the Windies captain. Special batting day, Morgan goes for 65, 3 2 1 for 3. Oh, what a lovely shot through extra cover, and nobody in the field has moved. The fitness man will have to throw that back, I think. He's in good nick. England's test match captain. That's a sublime innings. His 14th one day international hundred. It's been really good to watch, as it always is from Root. Oh, gone. 
they're going to look to see if this is a high no ball. Yeah, that's fine. Let's roll it through. Rolling through, rolling through. Freeze, uh, keep, keep it wrong, keep it wrong. Freeze it there. Yeah, no, give me another angle, please. Please, Rick. I don't have sufficient evidence to declare, decree that a no ball. Yeah, thanks, Rick. I don't have sufficient evidence to overturn a no call on the field. The uh, It's a fair delivery. Given us a, a fair delivery. It's real marginal, but good work from Bruce Oxenford. Didn't have enough evidence to call it one way or another. But the damage has been done. Wonderful innings by Joe Root. First blood to England in this five-match series. There's been some wonderful batting, some wonderful hitting. Stroke play, it's not been great for the bowlers, but the crowd have been royally entertained here. England with a big chase. Windy's batting first, 360 for eight, and England have chased it down in 48.4 overs. Well deserved, England's highest successful run chase in ODIs. High successful chase versus the West Indies because Chris Gale played a, a gem of an innings. And the third highest successful chase in all ODIs. Confirmation of a dynamic batting lineup if confirmation was ever needed. England got home relatively easily in the end, 364 for four. Jason Roy played a blistering knock, 123 from just 85 deliveries. And uh, Joe Root gave him good support with 102 from 97 deliveries. Morgan also played well, 65 from 51. And the batting just proving once again for England that they are the most powerful team at the moment. Story of the Windies bowling, not enough penetration. They were untidy in the field, a number of catches and chances going down. Two wickets for Jason Holder. He was pretty good given the conditions, a wicket apiece for Bishu and Thomas. The player of the match award went to Jason Roy for setting the tone for England's outstanding chase, their highest successful run chase ever in ODIs. So we're talking about records, the third highest successful run chase ever in ODIs, and that goes to England, winning by six wickets in this opening One Day International. Hope you've enjoyed all the action, and there was plenty of that, so that means that you'll tune in next time. So from Kensington Oval, bye for now.